The new guy turns out to be a high school bully, a crazy lady is running around with an evil necklace, and I'm sorry, but come on, the resemblance here is uncanny. Lieutenant Anderson now runs the DOD and he rips up Superman's passport after he flew out and rescued a North Korean submarine. A few scenes later, a massive earthquake threatens to shake up Smallville. That's when Anderson's super team introduces themselves by staring dramatically at the main character. However hard it may be, Natalie's just going to have to accept that this just isn't her mother. For those of you wondering, she took a wrong detour chasing after her father. What's more, it cost her the entire first season. Clark starts having a panic attack because how can they possibly capture all those hours he poured into the gym if the lens is out of focus? He asks Tal Rowe if he knows what's up, but he's all like, I don't know bro, take some Advil or something. In the meantime, he drops by the airport to stop a terrorist, only to realize this guy's all juiced up on X Kryptonite. Superman suffers from another one of his visions, and Anderson's team arrives to steal his thunder. They're later informed that whatever is causing his visions is coming from inside the mine. John's girlfriend has everybody on the football team juiced up on XK like it's a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship. Candace is only doing this to help pay for the bills, therefore, John decides to support a local family business. Clark's visions are getting so bad to the point he gives himself a sunburn, so they fast travel to the mine to confront whatever is responsible. Turns out it's not Doomsday as the CW tricked everybody into believing, but Bizarro. Lois has a sister we never heard about because she was too busy getting brainwashed into a cult in season 1. Sam arranged for the sisters to meet, but the evil cult leader shows up instead. Finally, Lana decides to run for mayor. Her entire campaign revolves around making cooking videos on TikTok. Superman slides into Anderson's DMs by handing him a tracker for Bizarro. He instead uses it to execute his team. Frankly, who even cares about these characters? Superman rescues Tag Harris while Bizarro slaps John into a hospital. Chrissy sneaks into Ali Alston's cult, but she sticks out like a sore thumb because she forgot to include glasses in her disguise. Lo and behold, Lucy tricked her sister into a creepy hotel. Lucy was convinced of another world out there, and Lois was all like, Do you know how crazy you sound? Lois was writing an expose on Allie using Lucy as her source, except she took out everything mentioning an inverse world. Chrissy wonders what else Lois could be lying about and decides to explore this other world for herself. The mayor starts playing dirty and it really gets to Kyle. So much so, he visits a bartender who he had an affair with. A young Miss Alston must also accept a family pendant if she wants the inheritance money. A pendant, which I may add, has destroyed her family for generations and they still kept it lying around for some reason. Chrissy wakes up from the inverse world just in time to watch Bizarro and Superman throw hands. They just keep on swinging until they feel like talking. Bizarro says he's actually here to put Ali Alston behind bars. Sam begins training the boys, although his empty-headed peanut brain doesn't even bat an eye that John's able to keep up no problemo. In contrast to typical CW writing, when Sarah overhears her dad talking about an affair, she immediately rats him out. Bizarro took the pendant, whipped out his inhaler, jumped into his doomsday suit, and there just happens to be a portal joining the two worlds from inside the mine. The pendant is what merges people from the two Earths together, while somehow making them infinitely more powerful in the process. Therefore, that's why they need to destroy it before it falls into the wrong hands. Anderson's got severe trust issues and maybe that's why he's still single. His tracker says Superman is in Russia, so he just assumes he's meeting the Russian president. Subsequently, Anderson arrests him for treason. The girls manage to talk through their issues, but as soon as he leaves to grab hot dogs, they argue over Ali and they're back to square one. Lana has been thinking pretty hard for the past 45 minutes, and she's thinking it's time for Kyle to start shopping for a new home. The last sons of Krypton escape by escaping, and Anderson follows them into the mine. He's got no idea what's going on, but there's one too many Kryptonians. 
Tal Ro uses super speed to decorate his body with kryptonite bullets, Superman flies him to a hospital in outer space, and Bizarro is outclassed by a juiced up nut job. In hindsight, maybe this guy should have been the final boss seeing as he defeated three Kryptonians in a matter of minutes. John takes the fall for Candace by becoming the most hated boy in Smallville. In doing so, he gets football season cancelled and everybody thinks he's taking drugs. Additionally, he's locked up inside a dungeon to reflect upon his actions. Ellie takes her cult out on a field trip to become their best selves. Turns out without a valid boarding pass, you'll instantly die when crossing over. While Superman rescues the others, Anderson takes the pendant for himself and disappears into the portal. They capture the final boss, yet Sam fails to interrogate her because he doesn't work here anymore. Elsewhere, this fool's looking to support a local family business but it's way past business hours. John gave up on XK long ago, but thankfully, Jordan comes to his rescue. For a facility calling itself the Department of Defense, it sure has some lousy security. Ellie simply walks out the front door, and the Boy Scout chases after her by flying so fast he ends up in the next episode. Now that Superman's not around to tear him a new one, John says the XK belongs to Candace, who in turn gets it from a lab just down the street. Natalie continues finding her purpose on this world, while Sarah and Jordan keep breaking up and getting back together every other episode. Superman finds himself on a cube-shaped planet because that's the opposite of a sphere. Trust me, I confirmed with the Shape Society. On this world, they were celebrities and John's the one who got powers. Tired of his old man overshadowing him, he threw on a supervillain starter pack, destroying any semblance of a family they had. That's when they decided Ellie Alston had to be stopped at all costs. Anderson explains his other half was cooked before they could merge. When he found out who Bizarro really was, he felt so bad he switched sides. In the big fight, Anderson meets a life-canceling machine, and it's not a CW show until someone is talked out of being evil. While that was happening, the final boss completes merging and charts a course for our world. Evil John borrows Lana for half an hour, and once they do locate her, Superman uses his empty-headed peanut brain to stand in front of an explosion which puts him down for the count. John flies off to finish things, however, the last thing he expected was to be facing off against a black belt. Clark feels like he owes Lana something at the very least, so he reveals to her he's Superman because we don't care for secret identities on the CW. The Irons are poking around the mine looking for some AA batteries to power a secret weapon when Lana shows up to inconvenience them. Even so, Natalie somehow sneaks her way behind the Kryptonian to inconvenience her first. The Pendant's plot armor is way too thick to be destroyed. In a turn of events, he's joined by his brother a few scenes later and they immediately proceed to destroy it by destroying it. Even with her Pendant destroyed, the final boss isn't giving up just yet. She enacts Plan B which starts by sucking him dry. Natalie shows the boys what she's been up to all season long. Kyle is such a cool dad he brings his underaged daughter into a bar to perform her songs. It's almost time to wrap up the second season, so consider any and all plot points resolved. This includes people going through breakups, sons being dicks, and any loose ends I forgot to mention. Just when it seems they finally got through to her empty-headed peanut brain, Ellie shows up to remind her about all the perks of her evil cult. The beeper summons the last son of Krypton right into her trap as she sucks him dry. Now that she's juiced up on two Kryptonians, she becomes the pendant itself and begins pulling the two worlds together. The skies turn red and various objects are replaced by their inverse counterparts as the worlds begin merging. Smallville is in a state of panic, and I would be too if I was suddenly cast into the Justice League movie's third act. The evil imposters suddenly show up at the school, but Jordan's able to hold them off long enough for Nat to throw on her superhero starter pack. Talk about overpowered, she defeats them in 11 seconds flat. John takes the secret weapon for a field test, but his puny little rocket does literally nothing. 
For the season finale, just pretend it's really high stakes here because I'm really running out of energy with these CW shows. Tao Ro cooks him in the sun to supercharge him, and he defeats the final boss by pulling a Doctor Strange. He then flies a few laps around the globe before slamming into the ground so hard it somehow fixes everything. The newly elected mayor addresses the town, Kyle really struggles to remember his lines for a farewell dance, Um. Tal Ro exits the show, and John Diggle shows up for another cameo teasing the next final boss, Bruno Mannheim. This may not be how you remember it, but it's probably close enough. <laughs> 